Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to talk to you about how much of your cosmetics actually get absorbed by your skin and can potentially enter your bloodstream. Well, let me make the video quite short and tell you not much actually gets through. But let's look at the science because I know you're not going to believe me at first glance, especially when there's so much misinformation on the internet that would suggest that somewhere between 60% and 100% of the cosmetics we apply to our skin actually gets absorbed and enters into our bloodstream. So that's the mistruth. Now, let me explain the truth of it. First, let's take a look at the epidermal structure. And I'm going to start this by saying size matters. The epidermal thickness is on average around 83.7 micrometers. This is 83,700 nanometers. The average thickness of the stratum corneum, the very outer layer of the epidermis, is around 14.8 micrometers. This is 14,800 nanometers. Now it's been established that substances need to be smaller than 500 Daltons to get any sort of penetration into the outer layers of the stratum corneum. Now, Daltons is actually a measure of the mass of a protein. But if we were to look at the molecular weight of chemicals, for example, we can roughly approximate 500 Daltons to 500 grams per mole. Now it gets even harder here to approximate the average diameter of a substance that is 500 grams per mole. But if you look at the density of the substance, its actual structure, you can roughly approximate one nanometer diameter to substances that are around 500 Dalton. Again, it's very approximate. Some are smaller, some are larger. It depends on the actual chemical structure. But we're going to use that figure in our explanations. So we are effectively talking about something the size of one nanometer traveling across 83,700 nanometers. To put that into perspective for you, I'd like to show you this pinhead. It's approximately 1.5 millimeters in diameter. Now let's compare this to a soccer field, which is on average around 100 meters long. Now that is a 66,666 times the size of this pinhead. And if we're talking about pushing one nanometer across 83,700 nanometers, the thickness of the epidermis, we are comparatively saying we're going to push a pinhead across the length of a soccer field to get it absorbed by the dermis. Even when it gets to the dermis, it's still not all vascular. The dermal layer contains your vascular system, but it also contains a number of other substances as well. And some of those include macrophages, which is your immune system's way of helping clear out the trash. So even if you could push this pinhead across a soccer field, it's going to be acted on before it can be absorbed by your bloodstream. Now at this point, you're probably going, okay, Belinda, well, that makes sense, then how do pharmaceutical or topically applied drugs work? And I'd like to stop you at that point and point out that's why they're drugs and not cosmetics. In fact, Annex 2 of the Cosmetic Regulations for Europe lists over 1,300 substances that are not permitted in cosmetics. And a lot of this has to do with ensuring safety for consumers. So by not having a lot of those materials in your cosmetics, you don't need to worry about them causing a problem for your health. The cosmetic regulations also stipulate a very large list of materials that have very strict regulatory limits on their inputs, again, to ensure consumer health. Now, to illustrate this for you, I'm going to talk about formaldehyde-releasing preservatives. Why am I picking on them? Because there's a lot of fear-mongering on the internet that these formaldehyde-releasing preservatives will one day contribute to giving you cancer. Now, formaldehyde is a potential and known carcinogen. So I'm using that as an example because we are talking about a potentially harmful substance. 
But if we look at one particular example, we're going to use the preservative diazolidine or urea here as an example. Now this is regulatory restricted to 0.5% maximum input in a cosmetic. And cosmetic chemists out there will know we don't use that much. But again, I'm going to use some worst case scenarios here just to illustrate how ridiculous the fear mongering campaigns are on the internet about your cosmetics possibly one day giving you cancer. So let's use this very exaggerated input of 0.5% of diazolidine or urea as one of your preservatives in your products. Now that will convert to approximately 0.215% formaldehyde. Even if I was to add up every single personal care product I put on my skin or my hair during the day. Let's take a look. Let's think about my shampoo, my conditioner, my body wash, the hand wash I use to wash my hands. Let's talk about my makeup, my eyeshadow. Uh, let's talk about any hairstyling products, deodorant, body lotion. Even if we took an entire daily cumulative total of products I apply to my skin and my hair as 100 grams of product, the amount that gets left on my skin when we remove the wash off products with short contact time and therefore very small potential absorption, I would be left with around 17.4 grams of residual product on my skin. Now if I multiply that 17.4 grams by 0.215% possible formaldehyde presence in my cosmetics, I'm left with 0.038 grams. Now, even if I was a smaller woman and I weighed 60 kilos, that works out to approximately 6.33 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. The LD50 oral intake for rats of formaldehyde is greater than 200 milligrams per kilogram. That's when it's ingested and about 50% of what you ingest can get absorbed into the bloodstream, which means even less of that is getting absorbed if I was applying it to my skin. To reach that LD50 oral value of a rat, I would have to eat about 32 times the daily amount of product I apply to my skin and my hair. I'd have to eat it, not apply it. Now, if we looked at a dermal absorption rate of around five times the LD50 of a rat, it means I would have to apply somewhere around 160 times the amount of product I normally apply before I have to worry about it causing me any health concerns. It's also really interesting that the studies they have conducted to establish those LD50 values in rats actually cause extreme dermal irritation before it could be linked to any cancer formation. And this is interesting because First of all, I'm not going to apply 160 times daily amount of product every single day. But even if I did, I'd have severe skin irritation, which would make me want to stop applying that much product before it turned into a cancer concern. So what have we learned from this video? Number one, 60 to 100 percent of product applied to your skin is definitely not getting absorbed into your dermal layer or your bloodstream. In fact, the estimated approximate value is around 10 percent or less, give or take. We've learned that size matters and that we would need to get a substance the size of a pinhead across the length of a soccer field before it can reach the dermal layer in the first place. In fact, one of the jobs of a cosmetic chemist is to try and get active cosmeceutical ingredients to the site of activity they need to go to ensure your products work. Now that's given me another idea for a video. Stay tuned because I'm going to talk about do your cosmetics actually work and some of the scientific data to support that as well. We've also talked about the strict regulations in place to not only prohibit substances that may have better absorption and safety concerns in humans. Remember, there's over 1300 chemicals banned in cosmetics for this very reason. We've also talked about the strict regulatory limits that governs preservatives and I've given you a really over the top example of just how much product I would have to eat or apply before I have to worry about it causing a problem to my health. So I hope you can now go away and use your cosmetic products with confidence that they're not going to give you cancer and they're not going to do you any harm. I'd also like to end this video by just pointing out that we're talking about absorption of substances here, whether they're natural or synthetic. Natural doesn't mean safe and natural ingredients are subject to the same sets of regulations that synthetic chemicals are too. 
So now I'd like to end this video and hopefully I've given you some confidence to keep using your personal care and cosmetic products without worrying that they're going to cause you damage so you can get back to enjoying the great products we have available to help us look our best and smell our best every day. Happy formulating.